Affairs demand to allow Palestinian representatives speak at national convention in Chicago. And in sports, Nigeria ranks 24th position in 2024 International Handball Federation Under-18 Women's Championship. And now the details, I am Mike James. Legacy the government has vowed to commence prosecution of individuals who engage in open defecation, particularly along the Berja Expressway, as sanitation operatives cleaned the feces that littered the median of the expressway. Speaking during an advocacy campaign ahead of enforcement activities, Permanent Secretary, Office of Environmental Services, Gaji Omobolaji, said the enforcement would prevent the spread of communicable diseases like cholera and diarrhea in the state. Gaji, who was accompanied by the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Transportation, Olawali Musa, and other directors of the two ministries, said the enforcement team comprising the anti-open defecation squad kick against indisciplined Kai and other enforcement agencies will commence operation immediately after the advocacy sensitization campaign. It maintained that anyone court will face the full wrath of the law with the hope that it will serve as a deterrent to others and ensure that the fight against open defecation is sustained. Gaji urged all residents to join hands with the government to ensure a cleaner, healthier and sustainable environment by instilling a culture of cleanliness which will be beneficial to present and future generations. Lagos State's government says it will divert vehicle traffic on Bordelon Road, Ikoyi, between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. on Saturday, 24th August, and 9 a.m. to 12 noon on Sunday, 25th August for construction work on the corridor. To this end, motorists on Bordelon Road heading towards Fallamore Roundabout are advised to turn right at Latif Jakande Road to Onishiwa inwards Oniru Road to link Thompson Avenue Roundabout into Thompson Avenue and make a right turn into Bordelon again to continue their journeys. Commissioner for Transportation at Oluwashim Oshiemi says motorists on the lane inbound Alexandra Avenue from Fallamore Roundabout will not be affected by the diversion, while assuring that the diversion will be managed by the state traffic management personnel. And as part of efforts to decongest correctional facilities in the state, the Chief George of Akwaibom State, Justice Ekaite Obot, has added the release of 44 inmates, including two females across the correctional facilities in the three senatorial districts of the state. Six of the inmates regained freedom in Iko Abasi Center, five in Eket Custodial Center, 11 were freed in Iko Ekmene Center, while 24 inmates, including two females, were pardoned in New York Custodial Center. The inmates regained freedom during the first inspection visit of the Chief George to the Correctional Centers. Justice Obo, who went through all the case files at the Correctional Chapel in the Uyo Center, observed that most of the beneficiaries had minor offenses and had stayed in custody for too long without trial. Some other inmates were also released on compassionate and health grounds. <laughs> and over to the rest of the stories, the Chief of Defence Staff, Christopher Musa, has called for collective measures among security agencies, community members and school managers to secure schools against security challenges. Musa made a call at a safe school workshop with the theme, providing a secure and safe learning environment for the advancement of national development. Organized by the 8th Division of the Nigerian Army, Sokwetu, he said the armed forces of Nigeria would continue to ensure the protection of children in collaboration with other security agencies. Musa noted that a secure and better environment must be provided for Nigerian children to be able to acquire education without fear of criminals. In his address, Chief of Defense, Training and Operations, Nigerian Army Headquarters, Emeka Onmajuru, said the workshop was in line with President Bola Tinubu's Renewed Hope program and the federal government's policy on safe, secure and violent free school initiative. The Minister of State for Police Affairs, Iman Suleiman Ibrahim, has announced that the federal government is committed to fostering an open and transparent dialogue between the Ministry of Police Affairs and citizens to enhance security through community policing. 
Suleiman Ibrahim started, stated this in Umahia, Abia State, during the Citizens' Town Hall engagement on strengthening community policing in Nigeria under the Renewed Hope Police agenda. It's at a town hall meeting with the theme Community Policing. Building a safer Nigeria today together is expected to provide a platform for direct engagement between the ministry on one side and the citizens and other critical policing stakeholders across the country. The minister said the federal government planned to reposition the Nigeria police as a world-class police institution fit for the 21st century, not only responsive, intelligence-led, community and technologically advanced, but also excelling in maintaining public safety, upholding the rule of law and fostering community trust through transparent and accountable practices. And in some foreign news, Democrats have rejected demands for demonstrators to allow a Palestinian to speak at a Democratic National Convention in Chicago. Uncommitted delegates who oppose United States supports of Israel's war in Gaza began a sit-in protest just outside of the arena doors on Wednesday night. The sit-in protest and the final night of the convention came as thousands of demonstrators outside the perimeter continued to rally against the war in Gaza and White House policy. The demonstrators this week have been largely peaceful except for a smaller unsanctioned protest outside the Israeli consulate that led to 56 arrests. Meanwhile, Israel's war in Gaza has divided the Democratic Party, but has largely been avoided as a topic of discussion during the Democratic National Convention this week. And over to sports news, Nigeria has finished in 24th position at the 2024 International Handball Federation Under-18 Women's Championship in China. Nigeria lost to Kosovo 21 to 18 in the placement match of the President's Cup on Friday morning. Nigeria's journey in competition involved seven marches, three in the preliminary round, two group stage marches, and two placement marches. The team managed to secure victory against Angola, winning 29 to 21 in the third Group B preliminary match. The victory placed the team in third position in Group B, allowing them to advance to the President's Cup alongside Angola, Chile and Austria. And that was our news at 12, but just before we go, slow down at road junctions, intersections and pedestrian crossings. You can follow us and like all our various social media platforms on X, Traffic Radio 961, Facebook, Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM, Instagram, Lagos Traffic Radio 961. Subscribe and watch our news and programs. It's live on YouTube, Traffic Radio 961. And you can also visit our website, www.trafficradio961.ng. Did you know that the Sawolu administration completed the Lake of Free Trade Zone jetty and offloading platform? Well, you can get more details, it's on the Lagos State Government website. And to end the news, here are the highlights of the major stories. Lagos State Government has vowed to commence prosecution of individuals who engage in open defecation, particularly along the Badger Expressway, as sanitation operatives cleaned the faces that littered the median of the expressway. The Chief of Defence Staff, Christopher Musa, has called for collective measures among security agencies, community members and school managers to secure schools against security challenges. And we also told you that Democrats have rejected demands from demonstrators to allow a Palestinian to speak at a Democratic National Convention in Chicago. From sports, Nigeria has finished in 24th position at the 2024 International Handball Federation Under-18 Women's Championship in China. And for contact with the newsroom, send a message to info at trafficradio961.ng. That ends the news broadcast. This was compiled by Zainab Badebeshi. Thank you so much for listening, Lagos. My name is Mike James. It's now time for me to step aside and hand you over to the door of Micah Arocha and Timmy Tokwe Peter's side. First off, it's going to be um, that uh, fire service calling the next lunchtime worker at half past all. Stay close.